So listen, Joe, uh, when was the last time you uh, heard the Rumpelstiltskin story? The Rumpelstiltskin story? Not for a long time. Are you familiar with the details still? Well, oh man, I'm not even sure I can remember what Rumpelstiltskin is. Mm -hmm. Now remind me. Well, you probably think it's like a grunge band who... Uh, <laughs> I get it confused yeah. with Strul Peter. Strul Peter. Strul Peter, which is that sort of terrifying Horrible drawing story. of the stick man. Was Strul Peter Brothers Grimm as well? I don't know. Um, but yeah, Strul Peter was the guy that went around, he had unruly fingernails, didn't right. he? Right, something like that. And uh, in the end, he got not only his fingernails chopped off, but his fingers too. Oh no! And that's a fun story to tell children. The kids love that kind of thing. Um, but you, you are, you know, you're a story craftsman, right? Right. Uh, you understand how stories work and why sure, they are sure. told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the logic then? What was the Brothers Grimm logic of, of sort of telling these terrifying stories to children? And, uh, well, they're allegorical, aren't they? Right. So there's, uh, what's the good thing about scaring the bejesus out of us? Because the world is scary. Right, right. And it's better to... Are these real questions? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, why, why? Do you find yourself telling stories well, to your kids that you, you wonder about their... Um, you know, whether they'll just freak them out and whether they're getting any allegorical well, I, I just fiber. feel, uh, the thing is, I, g I have to go off on tangents because I feel I have to explain everything. I'm like, mm. well, this is a grotesque. Like when I was reading Rumpelstiltskin, right, the mm. other night, here, I'll fill you in on some of the uh, Stiltskin facts. Mm. This is the um, boiled down version of the Brothers Grimm story from 1812. Uh, in order to make himself appear more important, a miller lied and said that his daughter would spin straw into gold. You remember that? Mm. The king heard of this, right? And he called for the girl and he shut her in a tower room with straw and a spinning wheel and demanded that the sp uh, sp that she spin the straw into gold by morning for three nights or be executed so already it's quite horrific you've got like a a father who's not a, you know he's an idiot mm. he's been boasting about his daughter's non-existent magical powers you've got a brutal despot ruler who locks her in a tower he's so greedy he wants the gold and he's a moron as well because he doesn't realize you can't really spin straw into gold and you've got this girl poor girl locked up in the tower she's only got three nights to spin the straw into gold and she's visited by a little gnomey man rumpelstiltskin and he jumps in into the room ah hello i can help you i can spin the straw into gold for you that's mm. how he sounds and so that's nice gets her off the hook what will you give me in return for the spinning in the shall i carry on doing that yes still spinning the straw into gold so she... what, what is what did you say he was a gnome he's a little gnomey man we're gonna get a lot of emails from little gnomey men now. <laughs> <laughs> saying that it's a reductive act yeah. that i'm doing yeah it's no you know curious. little gnomey men speak in a normal <laughs> way they don't they, they don't talk like this necessarily well, Rumpelstiltskin <laughs> did, though. I have it on good authority. That's exactly how he sounded. Yeah. So anyway, she gives him, like, a ring the first night. The second night he comes back and, and, and uh, she rewards him with, um, I don't know, some air miles or something. And then the third night, the only thing that she has left to um, say thank you to Rumpelstiltskin with is the promise that she will give him her firstborn child. Sure thing. You know? What else are you going to fall back on? That's all she's got. And the reason she makes the promise is because she thinks, I'm probably never going to have kids. You know, I don't really want kids. Um, I'm too busy. I'm going to set up a spinning straw into gold business and stuff like that. And I'm going to be too busy to have kids. So there's no problem making this promise. Anyway, sure enough, the king, after she's spun all this straw into gold, is so pleased with her performance that he decides to marry her. You would think she would run a mile from the homicidal king, right? But no, she, she says, yeah, that would be great. And they he get married. The king. He's the king, right. She, she thinks, Brills, let's get married. And then they have a child. Yeah, I definitely want to have children with you, the guy that threatened mm -hmm, to murder mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a child. And sure enough, Rumpelstiltskin comes back to collect on the kid, right? Yeah. So this is absolutely horrific, grotesque story going on here. And the only reason, that she, the only way she can get out of it is if she is able to say his name. At this point, she doesn't know what the little gnomey man's name is. And he says, if you can guess my name, then you can keep the kid. Wow, it's brilliant. So she tries to guess his name, you know, she sends messengers out uh, over f far and wide, and they come back with lots of different names. Is, his, is your name Mon? Is it? <laughs> Fudge. <laughs> no, my name is not Mon. No, it is not Fudge. No, it is not Rolljax. 
And uh, <laughs> she thinks, oh, no, I'm going to lose my child to this Nomi man. What's the Nomi man even going to do with the baby? Why does he want a baby? I'm not saying that Nomi men aren't going to make good parents. <laughs> but And these are all the caveats I have to make while I'm reading the story out, right? It's impossible to tell any story on exactly. the BBC without getting into trouble. And then, um, so basically, one of the messengers that she sends out happens across the little hut where the Nomi man lives. And the Nomi man is dancing round the fire, thinking he's alone, celebrating, and he is singing, Today I brew, tomorrow I bake, and then the prince's child I'll take. Um, the, the prince's child I will take, for no one knows my little game that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. Oh, he gave it away. <laughs> he gave it away. He gave it away. So the messenger Ooh. goes back, tells the... Uh, uh, sure girl, thing. And she busts him. And here is the original ending... Is that... Oh. Of the story, yeah. right? When, when, when she correctly guesses Rumpelstiltskin's name, he flies into such a rage mm -hmm. that he bashes his foot through the floor. Mm. And on one of the versions of the story, he tears his foot out and his uh, whole body splits in two. Uh, you know, is that a good story? That is stuff? a good ending. And then uh, another version of the ending, because there are many versions over the years. Another version, it says on Wikipedia, another version has Rumpelstiltskin exploding and killing everyone within a mile. Yes. <laughs> What's that? So I'm telling this to my little daughter, you know, <laughs> nearly three. <laughs> and it's just a minefield. Of, uh, of explaining and she might be too young for the story you reckon you she want to do you want to give her stories like about ducks yeah. going back to their pond she demanded it she picked simpler it out. stories Rumpelstiltskin. she wanted that one i mean it sounds like quite a complicated uh like economic allegory doesn't it mm -hmm. for somebody who gets themselves in hock to some sort of rich person by making a promise they can't deliver on evils of capitalism and then yeah and then ends up secretly making a pact with some awful money lender or something right and then is in hock to the money lender that you know the firstborn child is maybe some sort of metaphor for their for their future or something this is why i asked you isn't it story guru that but that's what it is isn't yeah, it yeah yeah but I don't know about the exploding See, my thing. mind is too literal. All, all, all I can see is just a frightening dwarfy man who explodes and kills everyone within a mile. Why hasn't Hollywood rebooted that one, though? You would think That's they'd go amazing. to that before Red Riding Hood, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I don't know. That's an idea. Get on it, Joe Cornish!